This is Math 151. We're going to dig into section 3.1, which is the derivative, the information, the uh, the introduction to a derivative. And if you've taken a calculus close, uh, course before, or if you talk to people about calculus, uh, this is one of the things that folks remember. <laughs> um, just that, that there is a derivative. Um, so let's talk about, back to an earlier lecture, the tangent line and the secant lines. And just so you remember, we have some point here that we're going to uh, call a f of a, right? It's a point. This is the this is the function f of x, um, a f of a. And we talked before about if I pick a another point that's on this curve, and I draw a straight line between them, I can find the slope of that line, and and that line right there is the secant line, secant uh, to cut. And we could find the slope of the secant line. Remember, slope is, think about change in y over change in x. So the way that we defined it then was this point would be the point uh, x, f of x. So the change in y would be how far is it from f of a to f of x, right? Like a height. So f of x minus over. Uh, that, that's the change in y over the change in x. So how far is it from a to x? So we could think of that as, you know, there's another way we could, we could think about it as well. I'm going to draw another picture that's going to be similar to this one. So we have this, this point, um, a f of a, put parentheses around those points. And now instead of, um, Instead of thinking about just like this as the point x f of x, I'm going to make this distance right here h. I'm just going to go like h out in the, uh, in the x direction. So notice then that this x would be a plus h, right? Because I started at a, I added h to it, and I got to here. And then as a function, I can just plug that in. So plug in whatever that number is, and it spits out the y value. So in this case, x is a plus h, right? h is just that, that distance right there. So uh, the slope of my secant line here then, my change in y is how far from this down to that, a plus some amount minus over um, how far this is and we know it's h so i could just say that distance is h if i wanted to get it you know from the point i could say a plus h minus a a plus h minus a notice the a's cancel h so i have to these two different ways to think about the slope of the secant line they're really kind of the same way i'm going to say maybe two different approaches x minus a tells me how long this is, this interval, and, and h just gives it straight to me. It's kind of this incremental change, you know, like how, how far it's gone. So remember, this is an average change, the average amount of change that's gone on over that increment. Now, what we can do then, remember the way that we found the tangent line was we let this x get closer and closer, boop, 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 we squeezed it up to a. So basically, there's two ways we could think about this. Uh, we were doing it with a table. Remember, we were plugging in like 0.1 or 0.01 or 0.001, and we squeezed that value to zero. Well, this idea of squeezing them together, now what we can do is we can take advantage of limits. In other words, uh, we could take this secant line, well, the slope of the secant line, I should say, and let x get really close to a, right? We're going to slide x closer and closer to a. So what I'll say is the limit as x approaches a. And this is slope of that tangent line. Again, notice what we're doing. I, I think it's uh, super clever. We're letting this, this secant line x get closer and closer to a, and then we're figuring out what the li limit of this ratio is. So then what we're doing is we're getting 
a, a basically like a linear approximation of that line of that of that function at that point kind of know how steep it is the rate of change of it at that instant so that came out of this definition uh, the other way we could think about it with that with that other secant definition is we're basically letting h go to zero we're letting this distance right here shrink down to zero so we're going to find uh, the limit as h approaches zero of f of a plus the increment minus f of a over h over the increment so what we're doing there is we're finding the um the slope of the tangent line this is the derivative so let's find the equation for the tangent line of f of x equals x squared at x equals 3. So we have this graph, x squared. Somewhere at 3, there's a line that comes through and touches it. And we know we can express this line in the form y equals mx plus b. So we'll need to know the slope of the tangent line. And then somehow we'll, we'll figure out the, the y-intercept. But we'll worry about that. Uh, first thing, let's think about where that point would be at. What are the actual coordinates of that point? Well, we know the x part is 3. And if I plug that into here, right, f of 3, I can evaluate that. 3 squared is 9. So this is the point 3, 9. When x is 3, y is 9 at that point. So I know x and y values. So let me find the slope of this. So I want to find the limit as x approaches 3, right? That's, that's where I want to find that derivative of, and if I think about this equation, f of x minus f of a. So f of x minus f of a over x minus a. Well, a is the thing I'm finding the limit of. So this a is a 3. So I'm going to plug that in. I know that f of 3 is 9, so I know that this is a number. And I know what f of x is. f of x is the function x squared. So notice the general y minus the specific y over the general x minus the specific specific x. Like every point on, on this is of the form x, x squared. And what I'm doing is I'm sliding x closer and closer to 3 to find the slope. So if I just plug in 3, 0 over 0, indeterminate form, so that I then am going to need to uh, try and resolve that. So let me factor this factor is to that's difference of squares, x plus three times x minus three over x minus three, and lo and behold, that divides out the limit as x approaches three of x plus three. I can just plug it in. Three plus three is six. So the slope is six. So now, how am I going to find that b value, that intercept? Well, this is what I can do. I know it goes through the point 3, 9. So when y is 9, x is 3. So I have uh, 9 equals 18 plus b. Subtract 18 from both sides. b is negative 9. So it looks like the equation of the tangent line would be 6x minus 9. So this is the line that if I were to graph it with x squared, it would just touch at the point 3, 9, tangent touch. And, um, and it shows me the slope at that moment, like how steep that is, 6. Um, just instantaneous slope, how steep it is at that, at that very moment. All right, I'm going to race a little, do some more examples. We are finding the slope of the tangent line of the function f of x, which is square root of x, when x equals 4. So let's use this, this definition right here again. So we want x to approach 4 over, notice it's f of x minus f of a. So the point when I plug 4 into here, square root of 4 is 2. So 4, 2. So if I took the function itself and subtracted the specific y value 
over change in x, x minus the specific x value. I have this. And again, uh, it's an indeterminate form. Plug in 4, it's going to be 0 over 0. So we've talked about, for this, I'm going to multiply by the conjugate to solve this limit. And the advantage to that is I can take, I know that uh, root x times root x is x. Um, negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. And then um, that middle term will drop out, right? Negative 2x, negative 2 root x, positive 2 root x. And in the bottom, I'm just going to leave this as an x minus 4. I'm not going to multiply this out because I'm hoping that that x minus 4 cancels out. I can actually see that it does. I have this. And I forgot, but you should remember to bring around that we are finding the limit. Those divide out. Something divided by itself is 1. So now I have the limit as x approaches 4. If I just plug it in, I get 1 fourth. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use the other definition too and, and, and get the same answer. So maybe I'll change color. So the limit as the, the increment approaches 0. Notice it's f of a plus h, right? And, and f of x is square root of x, square root of the input. The input is a plus h. So this would be the square root of the input minus f of a, the actual, um, I erased it. Oh, and a, sorry, that a is the x value. All right, so again, uh, if I try to plug in 0, I'm going to have 0 over 0. And I'm going to use the same strategy. I'm going to multiply again by the conjugate, square root of something minus 2. So I'm going to multiply by uh, square root of that thing plus 2. I remembered it this time. The limit as h approaches 0. Uh, square root of something times square root of itself again. You know, like it's like square root squared. So that is gone. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. Middle term drops out. Negative 2 times this, positive 2 times this. We'll add, add each other out. And then on the bottom I have h times root 4 plus h plus 2. And what's nice, uh, 4 minus 4 is 0. h over h. h is divide out. Leaving me the limit as h approaches 0 of 1 over square root of 4 plus h plus 2. Now I can just substitute it in, h is 0. So 1 over square root of 4 plus 2 is 1 fourth. I get it both ways. Like I said, uh, this slope of the tangent line is the derivative. So finding the slope of the tangent line is differentiation. Uh, we're finding the derivative at a certain spot. So the derivative, if our, if our function is f of x, one way we can write the symbol for the derivative is f prime. Actually, I'm finding it at point a. In that earlier problem, we said f of x is a square root of square root of x and we were asked to find the derivative when x is equal to 4 and what we found was f prime the derivative of 4 uh, the value of it was 1 fourth that's how this notation works so we're plugging 4 into the derivative now instead of into the actual function this work is pretty algebra intensive um, so let's let's go ahead and do a couple of these so um, f of x is x squared we want to find the derivative of f at 4 when x equals 4 so we could use a table to do this but uh, but why this is actually uh, we can actually just do it now so I'm going to take uh, this definition and I'm going to say prime of 4 is the limit as x approaches 4 of the slope of the secant line, right? f of x, which is x squared, minus f of a, well, if I plug that in, that's a 16, right? Because it goes to the point 416, 
over x minus 4. Again, I'm emphasizing y minus y, the general y minus the specific y, the general x minus the specific x, right, the point x, y. So I'm going to find this. If I just plug it in here, it's going to give me 0 over 0. But uh, clever, clever little things that we are, we know that we can just factor this. x plus 4, x minus 4 over x minus 4. These guys divide out, giving me the limit 4 of x plus 4. And that I can just plug in. 4 plus 4 is 8. f prime of 4 is 8. And again, what this is saying is um, the derivative of the function f at 4, when x equals 4, is 8. When x equals 4, this function has an instantaneous steepness of 8. Or, uh, if I draw that, and I want to have this point when x is 4, I could approximate really close locally a straight line to that function. Because that's at that point, if I zoom in enough, it looks like a straight line that has a slope of 8. All right, let's, uh, let's get in on this next one. I have my function g of x, blah, blah, blah. And I want to find g prime of 2. Let's plug in 2 and see what that spits out. So 3. So g of 2 is 5. If I want to find the derivative at 2, I want the limit as x approaches 2 of the function, the general y value, minus the specific y value over uh, change in x, the, specific, the general x minus the specific x. All right, so if I plug in 2, I'm going to get 0 over 0. Limit as x approaches 2. Combine some terms up here. 3x squared uh, minus 4x minus 4 over x minus 2. And I'm hoping that's going to factor, and it sure does. That divides out. Cool, I can plug that 2 in now and just evaluate it. 3 times 2 plus 2, 6 plus 2 is 8. <laughs> they both ended up being 8. Strange. The, not all derivatives are 8. Again, the way that I read this is the derivative of function g when x equals 2 is 8. At that instant, that's the slope. That's how steep it is at that instant. Two more examples. h of x is 6 over x. What would the um, derivative of h be at 2? All right, let's grab this first definition again. Give it a go. So the limit as x approaches 2, h of 2 is uh, 6 over 2 is 3. So the limit, I'm finding the limit as x approaches 2, again, of the secant line. So it's the general y minus the specific y over the general x minus the specific x. All right, so this is a case where I've got kind of this mess I want to take care of. Um, I'm going to find a common denominator for that top. So this would be a case where I am trying to just kind of simplify this complex fraction. This already has an x. I'm going to multiply this by x over x to turn it into that. Again, I'm just finding the common denominator. So then I can write this as 6 minus 3x over x divided by x minus 2. And again, I'm doing this because if I just try and plug into, I'm dividing by 0. I've actually got 0 over 0. So now what I have, limit as x approaches 2 of, if I think about this, this is 6 minus 3x over x divided by x minus 2. And remember, uh, dividing by something is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. So I could think of that as this. And I'm going to do a clever little thing here. Factor out a negative 3. So I have 6 minus 3x. Notice if I factor out a negative 3, that leaves me, that makes this a negative 2, and this a positive x. And that would be the same as 
x minus 2. So these divide out. So this leaves me negative 3 over x. And now I can just plug it in, plug in that 2. The limit as x approaches 2 of this is negative 3 halves. So the slope, the instantaneous change of h when x is 2 is negative 3 halves. Yeah, let's get on this. Let's get on this J. Um, so for it, I'm going to use this H definition because we haven't given it much attention yet. The derivative of J at 4 is going to be the limit as H approaches 0 of... So we have a couple pieces here. F, or, or, or the function in this case, J of A plus H. So, and, and A is 4, right? So j of 4 plus h. 4 plus h is my input into this function. So it's it's negative 3 over x gets replaced with 4 plus h minus 1. Right? Uh, like if this was a 7, it'd be 7 minus 1. If this was a k, it'd be k minus 1. This is a 4 plus h. So it's 4 plus h minus 1. Minus j of 4. Remember, it's, it's the general y minus the specific y. So I got to plug 4 into here now. Negative 3 over 4 minus 1. Negative 3 over 3. Negative 1. So minus negative 1. And that's all over h. I think that with this definition, the trickiest piece is probably plugging in the, the 4 minus h into the function. At least it is a sticking point, conceptually. Uh, I'm going to clean it up a little bit. Negative 3... Uh, 4 minus 1 is 3, so I could think of this as h plus 3, just so I don't have to carry around a bunch of uh, bunch of symbols. Ne minus a negative 1, plus 1, over h. All right, uh, so I have this complex fraction. I'm, I'm going to combine those. I need a common denominator. In this case, it's, it's h plus 3. Multiply this 1 by h plus 3 over h plus 3. The limit as h approaches 0, of negative 3 plus h plus 3 over h plus 3 over h. Okay, again, complex fraction. A fraction divided by a fraction. So if I think about evaluating this thing, it might help if I drew that like that, so you can tell it's that fraction divided by h. This is the same as, well, negative 3 plus 3 is just h. So let me, uh, is 0 leaving me an h. Let me clear that up. So this divided by that. So h over h plus 3 divided by h, same as multiplying by the reciprocal. h is divide out. So this is the limit as h approaches 0 of 1 over h plus 3. Good. Plug in the 0. 1 third. So that tells me that the derivative of j when x is 4 is 1 third. So we have a, uh, a situation where we have s of t, function s, the input is t, is negative 16 t squared plus 64. If you've taken any physics classes, um, you might recognize this as kind of a projectile motion type question. T is time in seconds, and S of T, the output, is the position in feet, basically the height. And the reason that we're doing this is this S is, this is a position uh, equation. And let's talk about then the velocity. Velocity is change in position. It's how, how, uh, how quickly the position is changing in an increment of time. So velocity is basically the derivative of position. So how about the velocity after one second? All right. Um, so velocity at one second is the same as the derivative of the position at one second. Is equal to, not minus. So let's grab this, and instead of f of x, we just have s of t. Same idea, though. So we're going to find the limit as the time approaches 1 
of the slope of the secant line. So the general s minus the specific s, s at 1. So let's figure out what that is, s at 1, plug in 1. Uh, negative 16 t squared plus 64. So 64 minus 16. And that is over the change in t. So the general t minus the specific t, t right, as, as time approaches 1. All right, if we plug in 1 right now, we'll get something indeterminate. Let's clean this up a little bit. 64 minus 48 is 16. Convenient. I can factor out a uh, 16, a negative 16 from this top. Keep going. I can factor that t squared minus 1 to t plus 1, t minus 1. And just like a dream, the t minus 1s divide out. Plug this in. Uh, so I, I plug in my 1, and I have negative 16 times 2, which is negative 32, and that would be feet per second. So after one second, the downward velocity, the velocity of this is negative, downward, 32 feet per second. One last example for you. Uh, the temperature in a house is given by this equation. It's, it's changing over time. Our, uh, our time is going to run, our T time uh, in hours, is going to run from 0 to 10. And 0 is 9 p.m. So this is how many hours we are past, past 9 p.m. Sorry. Um, so if it's 10, you know T is 1. And we want to find the instance, in, instantaneous rate of change in the temperature at midnight. So first off, midnight would be 3 hours after 9. So we're saying when t is 3. So what we're trying to find is the instantaneous change in t when the time is 3. Well, let's do it. Let's grab this left-hand definition. The limit as x approaches 3 of the actual function. 0.4t squared minus 4t plus 70. Again, the general x minus the specific x. And if I plug 3 into this, I could do it with my calculator, whatever, it's 61.6. So um, t of 3 is 61.6. So minus 61.6 over the general x minus the specific x. Again, this is change in y, and this is change in x. And I'm going to clean up my variables. My variable is actually t, so I should be I should be carrying t's through there. Sorry about that. I just I just love my x's so much. So I'm going to clean this up a little bit. T approaches three. Uh, Seventy minus sixty one point six. Eight point four. And if I go to plug in three, I'm going to be dividing by zero. It'll make me a zero up top too factor. I could factor out a 0.4, leaving me a t squared minus 10t plus 21 over t minus 3. This factor is, this is going to be like negative 7 and negative 3. Multiply to 21, add to negative 10. Thank goodness there's that t minus 3 in there because doopy do that falls right out. Leaving me, the limit as t approaches 3 of 0.4 times, tech, I got ahead of myself, t minus 7, but I can plug it in there. 0.4 times 3 minus 7, uh, 0.4 times 4, negative 4, which is negative 1.6. And if I think about what's changing, uh, degrees per hour. Hey, good luck with the uh, with the homework set. Send me questions as you're working on them. And notice that all of that work that we did on solving limits is like coming home to roost. So start to feel really good about all of our techniques for solving limits.